bold, be brave, be extraordinary, be vulnerable, be real, be curious, be true, be you. Welcome to Trusting Your Gut with world-class energy intuitive, Katherine McIntosh, a show designed to awaken you to enjoy the process of evolving. Have fun along the way and learn to listen to those silent in-between moments. You are the expert of your own life and nobody knows more about the next steps to take in your journey than you. So please listen to your gut and discover what's waiting for you to explore. Here is your host, Katherine McIntosh. All right, my magical friends, so welcome to today's show. As always, excited to be here with all of you. And like every show that we do live, um, you are welcome to call in with your questions um, anywhere where you have a roadblock. As long as it's appropriate, we will do our best to answer. And I always tell everyone, you know, like we can always receive advice from other people, but the point is not to take that advice at face value, to filter it through your own internal wisdom system. And so today's episode, we're going to be talking about how transformation is an inside job. And transformation is the thing that gets us to the success that we're looking for. So whether you are looking for success in relationships, success in business, success in wealth creation or physical accomplishments, whether you're looking for success in the areas of your health, transforming yourself to get to the success that you are seeking is 80% an inside job. 20% is what you do. But if you are trying to seek out advice on what to do and you feel lost, it's going to be hard. And so part of this being 80% an inside job, what I mean by that is 80% of your success is how you feel about you. And if you feel lost, if you feel confused, if you feel depressed, if you feel like you're a victim and you feel at the effect of life happening to you, it's going to be very hard to get you to the success that you desire to see in your life. And so one of the most important components in this process of becoming a success and look, every single one of you has a version of success that you'd like to see. Every single one of you, and I've worked with successful people all over the world, right? And every single one of them has doubts, they have fears, they have flaws, they have insecurities. Success doesn't mean that we get to a place where there is no doubt, where there is no fear, where there is no worry. Success means that you cultivate a sense of, of self-awareness. So knowing thyself is a huge priority. And how you begin to cultivate a practice in which you can curate knowing who you are, knowing your faults, knowing your strengths, knowing what you're good at, knowing what you're not good at, right? It's about looking at yourself without sort of the input from outside sources, right? And so a lot of people, they try to create success from getting advice from those who they see as being successful. But what most people don't talk about, but I think it's becoming a conversation that's becoming much more mainstream, is become conscious of your own self. Become aware of your own self. So I'll give you an example, and I've given it before, right? Is that, that, 
It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about you. It matters what you think about you. So let's give an example of a real life person that we can all maybe relate to, um, our dear friend, Sylvester Stallone, right? Now, if you don't know Sylvester Stallone's story, and I'm regurgitating, so it, it might not be exact, but this is the story that I heard and how I remember hearing it, is Sylvester Stallone you know, was trying to become a successful actor and not having success. He had moved to Hollywood and he wasn't doing that great to the point where he had to sell his dog for $25 at a gas station or at a local store. I believe it was a gas station because he no longer had food for himself or to feed his dog. And he got invited to go see a movie and it was a boxing movie or a boxing event. And he went, was invited, so he didn't have to pay, saw the event and it inspired in him to write a screenplay. Now that screenplay, he knew was a good screenplay. And he also knew that he wanted to be one of the main characters in that screenplay. So he went around to a bunch of, of studios in the area and pitched his screenplay and said, I have one condition. I want to be the actor in your screenplay. Well, most people said, you're a nobody. You're not a box office hit. We can't hire you. There's no way. So he got offered $25,000 and he said, no, thank you. Now, mind you, he was dead broke at the time, didn't have money for food. And most people might go, oh, that's the best I'm going to get. So I'm going to take the deal. But he didn't take the deal because it wasn't the deal that he wanted. It wasn't the deal that matched his belief in himself that he could be a success. So he kept shopping around to studios. One of the studios that offered him $25,000 came back at a much higher rate. And he said, great, as long as I can be the main actor. They said, no, sorry, you're not a box office hit. Nobody knows who you are. And he said, no. And he waited until someone agreed to give him an offer and make him the main actor in the movie. Now we all know that that movie became a huge box office hit and went on to create, you know, more movies in that series. And it put Sylvester Stallone on the map. So the point is, is that Sel Sylvester Stallone cultivated a knowing in himself. He knew he was already a success before anyone did. And kind of like life, you can't wait for outside influences to validate the internal success. But here's the deal is most people don't cultivate an internal success. They wait for the outside world to validate them. And I think this is just a huge mistake. And so one of the things that you can do is, you know, 80% is an inside job. 20% is what you do. And so I remember back in the day when I was trying to lose weight because I thought I needed to lose weight, um, which I don't, <laughs> I would follow everybody else's advice. Do this, do this, do this, do this. But here's the deal. No one was asking me before I took on their sort of diet protocol or exercise protocol or nutrition protocol. No one was asking me before I took on the protocol, what do I think about myself? And if you would have asked me at the time, young 20 something Catherine was extremely insecure. By this point, I had lost and gained, you know, hundreds of pounds. I had a severe eating disorder. I tried, you know, was pretty successful at losing weight, thinking that losing weight would get me to feel better about myself. But I woke up in a hospital bed at 96 pounds with IVs and machines hooked up to me. And I woke up and realized it didn't work. No amount of getting thin enough made me feel better about myself. So I wasn't a success. 
right? I didn't do it in a way that cultivated my internal game. And the internal game and how we think about ourselves, but also what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about the world, what we believe about possibilities, right? Most of us have spent our lives trying to survive. But I am a growth junkie and obsessed with transformation. And you can do all of the business plans, all the things, you know, right now on social media, you're saying, do this for Instagram growth, do this for Facebook ads, do this to get, you know, thousands of followers. And I'm not saying it doesn't work. But I truly believe that if you got down to the nitty gritty and interviewed people and asked them what their internal game was, right, you might be surprised to hear that almost all of them, right, had to have sort of a come to Jesus moment with themselves in believing it could be possible for them. And in believing the success before the success shows up. And so as I sort of, you know, navigated the world of my body and basically my lack of internal game with my body, my lack of belief in myself when it came to looking at myself in the mirror in trying on clothes and going out in the world. I did everything to cover my body up. Even at a very small size, I still thought I was fat and ugly. So my internal game was not on point. And so I would do these diets and say, well, this person said, if I do this, it will work. This person said, if I do this, it'll work. And so I spent over $500,000 following other people's advice. Now it worked for them because I believe that at some point they began to build a muscle in which they believed in themselves. They knew themselves. They knew their strengths. They knew their weaknesses. And so if you would have asked 20 something, right? Do you believe it's possible to lose weight with a diet? My answer would have been no. And yet, despite that, I still spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on protocols, on diets, on regimens, on routines, workout routines that promise to give me a result. But here's the deal is the result will rarely last long term if your internal belief doesn't match the result you're getting. And so Another example would be those people that win the lottery and years later, doesn't take a lot, a lot of time, they end up being right back where they were, which was broke, living paycheck to paycheck, not a lot of money, not a lot to show for it. It's because their internal belief did not match the success that they were receiving on the outside. And so it's a huge practice, right? Just like an Olympic athlete, if you were an Olympic diver, right? And you didn't practice tens or hundreds of times a day diving off the diving board, doing all your flips and tricks and inwards and, you know, backflips and whatever else it is. And guess what? During practice, There might be belly flops. There might be times that you come close to hitting your head on the diving board. There might be a lot of dives in which if you were in a competition, you'd be receiving less than a score of five, (laughs) right? Not a 10. But practice is how you get to be excellent. And as you practice and get better at it, you begin to develop a muscle in which you believe it's possible. And it's the same thing with your internal game and knowing yourself is you have to practice rewiring your brain for believing it's possible. And, you know, it's different for every single person. It's different for their brains and how it works. But most people that are 
highly successful, right? They cultivate a practice in which they build a muscle to begin to believe. And so um, a while ago, I had the pleasure of being in Central Pay at um, someone's house who was a very successful businessman. And I asked him to his face, I said, did you always know you were going to be successful? And the answer that he gave back just made me smile. And he goes, oh no, Catherine, I did not know, right? This beautiful French man with his beautiful family, incredibly just a beautiful human being. And he said, no, Catherine, I didn't, I didn't know. I would be successful. I wasn't sure. So he began knowing himself in that he didn't have a big belief in himself to be successful. I said, well, what changed it? Like what made you start to believe? He said, I just got really good at practicing, right? Sort of analyzing my day at the end of my day. And so he said, I would look at my day and what went well and what I thought about myself when it was going well. Right. And he, and then he said, and I asked for more of that to happen. But the other thing that I also did is I looked at the things that didn't work. And he said, and then I would, at the end of the day, ask myself, what would I do different tomorrow if that same thing occurred? And so he would build this muscle of practicing when an Olympic athlete, like an Olympic diver does a dive and it doesn't go so well, they rehearse in their mind what they would do different next dive, same dive, same thing, but maybe they tweak their technique a little bit. Maybe they tuck their body in a little bit more. Maybe they look differently, but they analyze every single thing that they're doing, right? And if you interview most Olympic athletes or most successful athletes at a moment of just a giant success. Like I saw something with David Beckham today and he goes, he goes, there was just something in me that knew I had to nail this goal. And it's one of his famous claim to fames in the soccer world. But he, he said he had missed that shot, you know, in eight previous games and every game he would analyze, what did I do different? What did I like any? So part of it, yes, is the what, right? The technique. But another part of it is there's like just this energetic switch that flips inside at that moment of I'm going to make this happen. But the beauty of that moment is not just I'm going to make this happen, is they spent hundreds, if not thousands of, an hour, of hours practicing for that one second, that five seconds, 10 seconds in time that could literally lead to a complete life breakthrough. And so this applies to you in your life is most of you without knowing it might be practicing for failure, for failure. You might be in your head thinking, oh, it's not possible. Mm, I can't do it. They'll never change it. So when it comes to me in my 20s and even in my 30s with my relationship with my body, if you would have told me, oh, this diet works, I'd be like, mm. if I got really honest with myself and really vulnerable, I would look back at those times in my life and go, wow, I did not believe in my body. I did not believe in myself. And I had a lot of trauma sort of running the show underneath, right? The trauma was the CEO of my reality. And so even though in theory, I was performing the actions that should create the results, the inner game was running the results, right? And so each of you are cultivating an inner game and that inner game is either programming and wiring you for success 
or that inner game is programming or wiring you for failure. And a lot of people think that they need to address the inner game that's wiring them for failure. But I always say to people, the failure will eventually subside. Now, it's not that you won't fear failure, but you change your inner relationship to failure, right? So uh, the founder of Spanx, and I'm, I'm, uh, oh my gosh, Sarah Blakely, there we go. I have a lot of names in my head, right? Her dad used to sit her down at the dinner table and ask, what did you fail at today? Or what did you fail at this week? And what that did is it changed her relationship to failure. So instead of fearing failure, she began to seek out failure as a form of an accomplishment. I did something good today. I took a risk. I failed when I took that risk. And so it normalized failure in her world. And thus she became one of the youngest, you know, female entrepreneur billionaires in the world right? She built her wealth by creating a different relationship to failure. And so one of the things that I navigate with people all the time is their fear of failure, their fear of what other people think about them, their fear of worry or doubt or feeling like a fraud or insecurity. And I say to them, you know, that those emotions are never going to go away. If there's more than 8 billion people on the planet and every single person on the planet has inside of them a vi- like a wave that catches the vibration of fear or catches the vibration of failure, catches the vibration of worry or doubt or shame or judgment then you can't actually get rid of something that exists. You can only change your relationship to it, right? You can only change your relationship to it. And so my friends, you want to look at your inner game and what is your relationship to you believing you could be a success? Now, if you have a crappy relationship with yourself, guess what? Everybody starts somewhere. An Olympic athlete didn't start out being excellent right off the bat 99% of the time. I mean, yes, some people have a natural ability or gift, but if you interview or listen to interviews of some of the most successful athletes, you will hear inside of their story, the hours they were practicing when nobody else was around the early mornings, they were waking up to train their bodies, to fuel their bodies, right? To train their minds, to believe it's possible so that when it comes down to game time, they're prepared right? I was giving this analogy in a class I was teaching today. And I said, you know, some of you are trying to ride a wave, you're out in the ocean and you're not being patient to wait for the right wave to catch. And so you're forcing the timing of it. You're not practicing patience. You're not preparing your mind, body, and brain, and spirit. You're getting smashed by the waves and you're swallowing seawater and maybe you're even like, you know, feeling like you're drowning every time a wave crashes on top of you. And so there's this sweet spot in life where you train and you train and you train and you train and you train. And And then you learn to be patient to wait for the right moment in time. And so some of you, right, need to practice patience, to practice waiting for the right wave. And as you wait for the right wave, you're not doubting that you can't surf. You've practiced surfing. You're just waiting for the right time, the right moment, the right 
environment, the right circumstances to catch that wave. And so when it comes to our consciousness, we need to rehearse in our minds an energy of inner belief of an inside job in where you are obsessed or at least versed in practicing cultivating a consciousness where you know thyself. And when you know thyself, right, then you don't have to blame your failure on external circumstances. You recognize that there's something within you that needs to transform. And, you know, this isn't for the, the, the weak minded or the fickle. This is for those people that, that become obsessed with growing thyself, with learning from within, with, you know, taking stock of your daily habits and looking at, wow, what did I do really well today? And how can I have more of that show up for me? And what didn't I do so well? And what would I practice doing different next time that occurs? All right? What would I practice doing different tomorrow? And so like Sylvester Stallone, he cultivated a belief in his ability to be an excellent actor, right? I personally love him. <laughs> I think he is incredible. And the Rocky series is one of my favorite movies, right? That soundtrack, the pump up music, and the story behind it of don't give up, right? Just because you lose once, don't give up. Just because people don't believe in you, don't give up. Just because you've had a hard life, don't give up, right? I um, coach um, sort of energy workers, right? Healers of all sorts and all walks of life, whether you're a coach or a consultant or a therapist or a massage therapist or an acupuncturist, teach them, right? Cultivate this, this belief in yourself, this moment in time, so that when your wave comes, you're ready to ride the wave and no wave lasts for a lifetime, right? So you learn to ride the waves of life and catch the ones that are right on time and enjoy the exhilarating feeling. And so, so Sylvester Stallone cultivated a belief in himself and waited for the right wave. He didn't take the first wave that came, right? The first offer. He didn't take the second wave or the second offer that came or even the third or the fourth. He took the one when it was his wave to take. And so may this be a reminder to all of you that success is within you, not outside of you. And so wherever you are in your life's journey, whether you're looking to get fit, whether you're looking to feel a little bit healthier, maybe gain some confidence, right? Ride the wave for as long as you can get to know what works for you and what doesn't. And so in the 20 years that I messed up my body royally, that I was riding waves prematurely, right? I was hoping the wave would build my self-esteem. No, I had to build my self-esteem so I could ride the wave. And so take time with yourself, be patient wait for the right wave. And as you're waiting for the right wave, build a muscle in which you become unstoppable in your own world, right? You are the CEO of your own reality. And, you know, if you're anything like me, I spent most of my life looking outside of myself for the answer. Now I have incredible mentors, I have incredible coaches and friends, people I hire to help me on my journey. 
but I also now know that it's up to me. Do I believe in that thing that I say that I want to have, that I want to create in the world? Do I believe in me? So when you get an idea, you get an inspiration, you get a hit, right? I want to invite you to, excuse me, can perceive some energies clearing, right? I want to invite you to, to really go within to, to see if you can grow thyself, right? Transform thyself by focusing 80% of your time, right? On growing yourself first. It's a really, really powerful practice. So we're going to come back after the break and talk a little bit more. Ohm Times TV. Do you trust you? Do you trust your body? What if the key to unlocking the weight, pain, suffering, fear, anxiety, addictions, traumas, and sorrows was already inside of you? Learn to love the skin you are in so you can create the body, business, and life you love. Everyone always says you can't explain what Catherine does, you just have to experience it. From Hollywood actors to New York Times best-selling authors to some of the world's wealthiest and most successful, no two experiences are the same. For private sessions, online courses, live events, and the latest book Jack Canfield calls Game Changer and should be required reading for everyone, go to katherinemackintosh.com. K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E-M-C-I-N-T-O-S-H.com. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust, spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. All right, we are back from break. So welcome. We are talking about transformation as an inside job. And, you know, from a very young age, I've always been obsessed with the idea of transformation. You know, I um, spent a lot of time um, in South America. Um, my first marriage was to a man I knew I should not have married, but I did anyway. And I'm grateful for that experience because I, I learned a different way of being. And when I lived in South America, I learned that, wow, I grew up in, you know, this upper middle class sort of lifestyle and upbringing where appearances were really major. And so we pretended we were a happy family, but the reality on the inside, and I used to say, you never know what happens behind closed doors, was we weren't so happy. 
right? We're fighting for an image instead of living a reality. And this, you know, green eyed, blue eyed at the time, my eyes change colors depending on my life cycles, but I used to have really blue eyes. And at some point in my twenties and thirties, my eyes became green. And now in my forties, my eyes fluctuate back and forth <laughs> depending on the day. So I remember being just this bright eyed, blonde haired, white skinned, freckled faced, you know, curious and eager 20 something. And when I got to South America, I really wanted to experience what it was like to live in a developing country. And I remember looking at the people that I was around and looking at the culture and these people were happy. They didn't have much, but they were happy. And I went, whoa, this is like, this is blowing my mind because that was not the world that I grew up in. That is not the experience that I had. And so I became fascinated by one's own ability to create a level of joy in their world without needing proof of material possessions to make you happy. And I think we can translate that to our lives and where we end up focusing on the external results. Do I have the relationship? Do I have the status? Do I have the car? Do I have the house? Do I have the money in my bank account? Because once I get there, then I'll be happy. And what I learned by living in South America, I was in Quito, Ecuador. What I learned was you don't need any of those things to make you happy. And if you can begin to enjoy the journey of evolving, enjoy the journey of becoming a greater version of yourself every day, it's not a one choice you make. So sort of like my, my friend, this successful Frenchman who said, you know, I spent the last 20, 30, 40 years of my life literally reviewing my life every day. Small choice over time led to big results. Small choice over time led to big results. And so within each of you is this ability to make a different choice. Not a big life-changing choice, but a small choice. And that small choice starts with practicing, cultivating, enjoying who you are, right? So a lot of people think that when they get to spend time with themselves, they don't like who they are, right? So they distract themselves with social media. They distract themselves with jumping from relationship to relationship or date to date, not right or wrong. It's just a different choice. But when you start to really like what it feels like to keep your own company, meaning to spend time alone and you enjoy who you are when you're alone, it's an incredible incredibly empowering process to get really good at liking your own company, right? Now that doesn't mean you have to stay there, but you do have to begin to enjoy who you are on the inside more than what you think you look like on the outside. And so when we stop rushing for the success, rushing for the result, rushing for the weight loss, rushing for the ripped body, right? And we begin to recognize that the most important thing we can do is be patient and do these small little things every day to build the muscle of knowing thyself and liking who that is, knowing thyself and recognizing maybe your weaknesses and not feeling insecure about them, but just recognizing they're there and then surrounding yourself with people who compensate, meaning that they have the strength 
where you might have the weakness. So they support you in the process. And so you always want to surround yourself with people who believe in who you are and what you want to create in the world. I was laughing with a, a girlfriend of mine the other day because I, I said to her, I said, I think I found my dream house. And I shared the link with her and she's like, oh my God, Catherine, I love you so much. You are so ridiculous because you always shock me at how big you dream. And I was like, well, dreaming big makes me happy. Dreaming big expands my energy. Dreaming big gives me this like sort of sensation of possibilities that didn't yet exist in my world. Now I could easily open up my bank account and go, yeah, I can't afford my dream house, which doesn't really make me feel good doesn't really sort of um, fuel the inside job, right? What fuels for me one of like knowing myself is also knowing that I do so much better in my life if I dream big. If I get too practical with certain aspects of my business or certain aspects of my friendships and relationships and parenting, I get bored and then I get depressed and then I feel lethargic and then I go to food to satiate my boredom. And so for each of you, now some of you dreaming big might not be something that expands your energy. That's okay. It's, it's knowing what does expand your energy. Some of you expand your energy when you have a lot of money in your bank account, when you've prepared the savings, when you, you know, meal prep and plan for your meals. And so I don't know exactly what it is that is going to fuel each of you in your quest to develop a rock solid internal game. So when you have a rock solid internal game, the judgments will still be there. The insecurities will still be there. The feelings of fraud will still be there. The uncertainty will still be there. But guess what? You no longer give it the attention or the energy because you will build within you right? This, this ability to navigate the mental obstacles that try to derail you off your path, right? I had a mentor once say, only share your big dreams with, with people who, when you share them, they light up. Don't share them with people who want to protect you or be practical or talk you out of your dreams, right? And so I would extend that invitation to each of you with everything in your life. If you are on a health regimen and, and maybe this is your hundredth time you're doing this, a different, a new version of I'm going to get healthy, but this time you don't share it with anyone. This time you've done the internal work to know it could be possible for you. And now you're taking action that also is in alignment and matched with an internal belief that it could be possible for you right? So you've done the work to believe in yourself. You've done the work to know you're enough just as you are right now, that you don't need to, you know, do it. It's, it's the times when we are unsure that we seek external validation. But when we're sure, we don't need external validation. So I would encourage each of you to be aware of who you're sharing your dreams with, who you're sharing your, you know, new routine with, or, wow, I'm going to start doing this. Now, it's great to have accountability partners, right? People who hold you accountable, but I believe it's far more effective to hold you accountable. 
So I have an 11 year old son and every once in a while I catch him in a little white lie. It's not a big deal. It's like, he wants to like be big. Like when I'm like, did you brush your teeth? Yes. I'm like, the only person you're hurting by lying to me is you, right? Because <laughs> you'll be paying for your dental work moving forward. But the point is, is, you know, we all probably tell ourselves these little white lies, like the white lie, I've tried absolutely everything, right? Like the white lie, I can't, right? Like the white lie, I'm too scared, those things become comfortable to say because we've grown accustomed to making it okay to live in mediocrity. But if you're listening to this and you still are listening to this, chances are that you don't like mediocrity too much. You don't do so well in it, but maybe you've taught yourself to live in it and be practical. Well, I am definitely not good at mediocre. I'm not good at the status quo, right? I want excellence. I want fantastic. I want aliveness and vibrancy. I want realness. I want intimacy and like real conversations. I want to know people's dreams. I want to, you know, one of my favorite questions to ask is if you could wave a magic wand, what would you ask for right now? What would you do different right now? And when people share that, it's like they can hear themselves while simultaneously hearing the story they've been telling themselves that keep them from taking action towards their dream life. And so you are your best advocate in beginning. And so let's recap a little bit about things you can do right now today to begin to cultivate your internal game with yourself so that you can move the needle forward and become the success in your version. Now, my sister, total success because she loves her life, right? She is happy doing what she's doing and she loves every minute of it right? She's incredible at what she does. She lights up people around her and she's happy with the life she's created. Now, if I had her life, we joke, we're like complete opposites because I kind of want this really big life. And my sister in her world has this incredible life. It's big enough for her. She thrives on relationships. She thrives on helping communities. She, you know, is bilingual. So am I. We're very different in how we speak, but she is happy. And so this isn't about the fancy car and the big house and the first class travel all around the world. If that's not part of what you want, it's, it's getting really, you know, sort of meticulous with yourself and honest with yourself and vulnerable with yourself, are you living the life you want to live? And if you're not, what needs to change? Right. And so get to know thyself, become really aware of the little white lies that you're telling yourself, become aware of where you're using your stories of the past to be the obstacle to your future. Right. So I'll give you an example. I had a pretty tumultuous upbringing, right? It wasn't easy. All four of my, well, there are four of us, of my siblings. So I have three siblings and then myself, my family of four, my two parents. We had a really tough life. And we also had a really amazing life in a lot of different ways. And, you know, I could easily tell my story of all the things that I have been through and I could live a life where I, you know, am a victim, where I use my past as the reason why I can't move forward. But I was teaching today and I said to them, I said, everything that you've been through, and actually Ed Milet says something along these lines. He says, everything that you've been through, right? Makes you qualified to help others. 
So what I was telling them is the life that you've lived, the experiences that you're experiencing right now, they make you qualified to help other people. They make you qualified to be a good friend or a good lover or a good spouse, right? Because it builds a muscle of empathy. It also builds a muscle to get to know who you are. And so get really good at being willing to review your life on a daily basis at the end of your day or at the beginning of your day. I personally do it in the mornings. So what I'll do is I wake up in the morning, I look at what did I do yesterday that you know, I kind of look at, wow, everything I did. So for me personally, I was really good at pretending I didn't do a lot in a day. And what I realized is I do way more in a day than I ever thought I did. And so I review my day. What did I do? How many phone calls did I make? Who did I talk to? What did, who did I reach out to? What part of my business did I focus on building yesterday? And I look at it. Who did I connect to? Who did I make an impact on? And then I look at, okay, what did I do that worked yesterday? And what do I want more of? And how do I create more of that? So I look at, well, what was I feeling about myself? What was I thinking? What was I, what were the stories I was telling myself, right? What did I do that day? Did I meditate? Did I exercise? Did I do my somatic exercises, right? And then I look at what I did. Did I have my coffee? Did I write in my journal? And then I look at, okay, what, what didn't go as planned? What didn't work so well? Where did my ego get in the way? Where was I defensive? Where did I tell myself these little white lies in my life? Right? And so when you review your day, get honest, right? The only person it impacts if you lie to yourself is you. It hurts you, but guess what? If you have a company, it also hurts the people that you work with. And so there is nothing wrong with recognizing your weaknesses, being honest and open with your weaknesses. And guess what? There's also nothing wrong with being honest with your strengths right? Because we want to start to surround ourselves with people who know what their strengths are. If I'm hiring someone to work with me, I want them to know what their strengths are, right? I also want them to know what their weaknesses are. It doesn't make them a, you know, bad at contributing to the company because they probably have a strength where I have a weakness, right? It's that willingness to, to be vulnerable and investigate, right? So took some notes just to make sure we're on track and I'm giving you as much information that's helpful for you to take this out into your world, right? And so one of the things that I think that we don't do very often, especially when it comes to our mental abilities to strengthen our own self-awareness, our own consciousness, is practice doing differently, doing different. So when I look at what didn't go so well, I don't just go, oh, that didn't go well. I wish I would have gone differently. I wish this person would have showed up. I wish this, you know, whatever I wish is. Instead going, okay, that didn't happen. What would I do differently next time that happens? Oh, I do this differently. Oh, I didn't work out yesterday. Okay, how come? What would I do different? Oh, tomorrow, first thing, I'm going to put on my running shoes, right? So you begin to practice so that you're prepared for life when you wake up every day, right? Prepared for life when you wake up every day. I used to resist routine thinking, oh no, I'm not doing that. But the more you do it, the more you set yourself free. So the biggest thing that I think that we don't do is we don't give ourselves permission to recognize how far we've come. Look back and look at your life and go, wow, I'm pretty different than I was a year ago, right? Wow, I'm really grateful that all of this has changed. 
So take stock on your life, my friends, and stop worrying about all the things that aren't working in your life from an external vantage point and start to look at what you can do to cultivate success on the inside, to cultivate an internal belief. And then the external, it, it will come. I promise you it will come. And so thank you for being a part of my show this week and every week. And if something in the show sparked you or you liked it, please feel free to pass it along, to share it, to let a friend know, subscribe to the channel. And uh, the more the merrier, my friends, because here we are all doing this journey called life. And, um, you know, the more we can learn to go on the inside, the easier it gets. So until next time, thanks for being here. Catherine is not a medical practitioner nor a licensed therapist. She has strong opinions and will express them and truly believes that you are your best advocate for any and every area of your life. If you need medical advice, please consult your physician. 